Oh look, there's some kangaroos. Hey Skippy, do you want to see my spare tyre? So the thing about Toyotas is, well most Toyota 4-wheel drives have their spare wheels, they call it underslung, I just say it's underneath the car. And well it's good because it gives you more room on the inside. Uh, there is a bit of trouble though because a lot of people don't know how to pull them off. So I'm going to show you the difference between this and talk to you about the difference between something like a Land Cruiser. Um, also, I need to change the orientation of my spare wheel, so we're going to pull that off now. On a Land Cruiser, the spare wheel sits underneath the car on a winch, and basically in the middle of the tyre, around here, is a metal plate, and that metal plate is connected to a winch cable underneath the car. So when you wind the tire up, it pulls on the cable and it lifts that tire up into the belly of the vehicle. On something like this High Ace, it's a little bit different because this one sits in a specific spare wheel cradle uh, and it can be a little bit different to pull off. So if you notice here, there is a nut and that nut is what holds the cradle to the car. So we're going to pull that off now. And to do that, I've got my original spare tire tool kit. I pull all the pieces out for that because I don't actually know which piece fits in where. So that looks like it'll go in here, which it does. And so all I need is something to spin it with. Oh, look at that. Now, if you look at the spare wheel, it should start to drop a little bit. So your ultimate goal is to drop the tire just a little bit because the cradle on this thing will not drop it all the way, or the retainer I should say, will not drop the spare wheel all the way to the ground. So you need a little bit of knowledge and there's a little bit of faffing around and you also need a little bit of strength. Let me show you why. That's about as low as that spare wheel cradle will go. Now what you need to do is put your strength into it, lift up the spare wheel and the cradle so that you can unhook the piece that pulls it in and retains it. So come have a look. This here is basically a claw like that, that holds onto this spare wheel cradle. That claw is what's connected to this bolt. So when you loosen it, the claw drops the cradle down a little bit. When you tighten it, it pulls it up. The way to get this cradle down fully is like this. You then have to lift the cradle up and then spin the hook around so that the spare wheel is now free to drop down. So the reason I'm pulling my spare wheel off is not just to show you, it's because it's orientated in the wrong direction, meaning the rim or the face of the rim is pointing up towards the fuel tank of the car. And the problem with that is I can't check the tire pressure without pulling the spare wheel off. The second thing about that is because the rim is facing upwards, there's a deep cavity underneath the car. Now, if I was to get caught up on something off-road, I would much rather be caught up on the face of the rim than have something poke through and actually sit inside the rim of the car because that would be a nightmare to pull out. So let's pull the spare wheel off, let's check the tire pressure, let's spin it around and put it back. I've briefly seen the spare wheel and it looks to be the original spare wheel for this car. Uh, it's a 195. Uh, R15. So I'm just going to put it alongside my actual tyres at the moment. It's obviously an all-terrain tyre. So I'm going to line it up against my current tyre. It's a little bit bigger, but it's about the right size. Because this is a full-time four-wheel drive, uh, you definitely want to have the same size spare uh, carried on board the vehicle as well unless you want to risk destroying your transfer case or your drive line. So let's check the tire pressure. I use my 
electronic gauge for this. Need to hold it there for a few seconds for it to save. 23.5 PSI. So when I orientate this the correct way around, I will, of course, stop off at the gas station on the way home and fill it up with 44 PSI. 44 PSI feels like a lot, and it is, but you've got to remember that tires over time will lose air pressure. So when I go to use this, if I ever have to, I would much rather have a little bit more pressure inside that I can release than to have less. So this is where this kind of setup is much more difficult than something like a Land Cruiser's. Because on the Land Cruiser, all you have to do is put that winch cradle bracket through the center hole and it basically pulls it into place. But to be seated in place now and so now installation will be the reverse of pulling it off it's best to lie flat on your back kind of like bench pressing on the side pull this up turn the hook around turn the hook around and then drop it into place and that is now securely in place. All that's left to do is to wind it up in the opposite direction, so right clockwise until it stops. Remember, a flat tire is physically smaller than an inflated one, so before you inflate your spare, it might pay to loosen off the cradle just to avoid any unnecessary stress on the cradle itself and your fuel tank. Cool. Just snip it up a little bit. You don't want it gorilla tight. It's not going anywhere. And that is my tips on underslung spare wheel carriers. Thanks for watching. If you like these sort of tips, uh, please consider subscribing. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Thumbs down if I could have done better. But if you give me a thumbs down, you have to tell me why in the comments below. See ya.